I was hoping, because uh, I do like to talk with y'all, I was hoping that the next time that I was coming here, it was to thank you and to congratulate you on finally doing the right thing. Finally allowing Pastor Moses to do his commission as a Christian pastor to help feed and shelter those the most in need in your city at a time when, as, far as, I, as I was recently told, in this year alone, 68 homeless people have died here. Okay? I was hoping to congratulate you on finally calling for the body cam footage related to Joshua Rohrer's arrest and the, uh, and the tasing of his service dog, Sunshine, by Officer Maurice Taylor III, son of Internal Affairs Chief Maurice Taylor Jr., uh, for that to finally be released. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. And unfortunately, I'm coming back to try to figure out exactly what we need to say to y'all to get you to just do the right thing. It's honestly baffling. I, I do a lot of this. I speak to a lot of city councils and county councils around the country. And usually when we show up with dozens or hundreds of people, your residents, your voters, to ask you to please do the right thing, usually the councils do it. Usually they do it. So I'm at a, a bit of a loss here. So on the way here, I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to talk with y'all about. And I thought, you know, are we going to talk about your social media, which has just become thousands of people calling for you to release the body cam footage, hundreds of people uh, saying that they plan not to come here and we're considering doing so. I actually had a screenshot on my phone of a guy named William. He was planning on moving his business here. Uh, he's moving to the Charlotte area and was thinking of moving his business here. And this exact uh, incident, series of incidents, has led him to not do that. Was I going to talk about uh, the fact that uh, you are now on the radar of a group of community uh, people named police auditors? And what they do is they go around to communities uh, and they audit the police live. They make sure that the police know exactly that they're doing their job right and that they're not violating the rights of people. And they stream it live on YouTube. So you guys get to enjoy that soon and millions more people get to see that. And speaking of millions of people, another thing I thought that I might want to talk with you about is the millions of people that I've gotten to talk to in local and regional and national and international media channels who I've talked to about not just the situation with Pastor Moses and your homeless community, not just the situation with Joshua War and Officer Maurice and his father, Internal Affairs Chief Maurice, uh, but also about uh, the killing of uh, James Allen, the 74-year-old veteran who was convalescing in his own home, recovering from surgery, and was killed by the Gastonia police for the crime of not answering his door at midnight. By the way, everyone watching at home, uh, if you worry about your loved ones, do not call 911. The police don't necessarily want to kill your loved one, but it's not out of the equation. It's not out of the I'm sorry, peace officer. Not police officer. It's now peace officer appreciation week. The peace officer uh, is not above shooting your loved one. Or hearing about the Eagle team. Who here was in Gastonia City government? Chief, were you uh, in the, the Gastonia City Police during the Eagle team? Any of that? Uh, when the, uh, the terrorists in the Gastonia Police Department were going around torturing and, uh, and brutalizing homeless people, ultimately killing Ben Hanna? Were, were any of you around for that? Well, they'll find out and they can decide if they thought that anyone that was in it also knew about it if, or if it was only those people that knew it was happening. Uh, but I think actually what I want to close with is asking you to consider what it would be like if you were on this side of the dais. If it was your loved one who was going through this and asking you by email, asking you in person, asking you by phone, asking you in any possible way they can, if you could please just do the right thing and watching at meeting after meeting, and I realize right now you can't respond. But you continue to sit and not respond when you can. And what that would feel like if you were on that side. How you would feel. How frustrating that would be. How you, if you were not the person sitting right here with the, uh, with the, uh, the uniform on, and instead we're sitting over there wondering how the person sitting with that uniform on could sleep at night knowing what his officers are doing under no accountability, what would that feel like? How frustrated and angry and hopeless would you feel to know that the people who are charged with protecting you and defending you didn't? We'll be back next month. And I hope that we can commemorate your newly, uh, your newly inspired 
Peace Officer Appreciation Week by showing their commitment to justice and truth by simply showing the truth of what happened. I hope that that's what's going to happen. Either way, we're going to be back. There's going to be more of us. We're going to fill the room. By the way, I love what you did with the place here, Your drastically up, reducing Cohen. the seating. Your time is up, Mr. Cohen. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, the public is always told uh, that if they have nothing to hide, then they have nothing to fear. Uh, this should also apply to our police officers and public servants because uh, they're supposed to be held to a higher standard. But uh, to me, it seems like the Gastonia Police Department does have something to fear. I just Thank want you. to ask you all to think about what we said uh, at the beginning of this council meeting when we stood up and recited the Pledge of Allegiance. The last few words was, for liberty and justice for all. That means all. All means all, and that's all all means. I'm asking for liberty for Pastor Moses, for a man who is willing to open up his church, his wallet, and his heart to help the homeless, the least of these, justice for Joshua Roar, a veteran that was harassed by the police of this city. If, there's, if you want trust as a city council, and if, you want, if officers want trust, there needs to be accountability. With no accountability, there can be no trust. One of the previous uh, proclamations, I heard it several times, leaders in quality of life. I'd love to believe that illusion, but I have to challenge that Mr. Rohr's quality of life has been impeded. I would also uh, venture to say that the uh, less fortunate that uh, Pastor Moses was uh, working with outside of his church, where he was told to do the uh, job of the church and not worry about the homeless, I say that my God, my Jesus, gathered and fed the masses. He did not turn them away. And to ask this pastor to turn them away, you're asking him to, you are violating the very First Amendment right that shall not be infringed. That is his religious freedom. I don't care what ordinance that this city has passed, it shall not be infringed. Shall not. Shall. You know, I'm here. Um, came back because seems nothing's been done in seven months. And um, why? Why has nothing been done? Why has there been no accountability? Why has there been no transparency? Y'all have literally spent $1.2 million to buy more tasers and more body cameras and aren't even releasing the footage that you do have. And I can't do this. I'm having a really hard time because I don't have my service dog anymore. Nobody knows what that's like unless they've been through it. And You've got to release that footage. You have to. I don't deserve what happened to me, and Sunshine does not deserve what happened to her. They should have never separated us. They went out of their way to separate us and laugh at me. They thought it was funny that their fellow officers tased a service dog. That doesn't sound like behavior of a public servant. And you said to mind who we're talking to. Y'all are public servants. And you rolled your eyes when he said that 17 homeless people had died in this town? You seem so disinterested in this conversation and everything that we have to say. And I went by the a homeless site on this afternoon, and I witnessed probably about 25, 30 homeless people gathered up under a tree. And I can only think that they are suffering from dehydration from not having proper nourishment. I heard one of the brothers say 17 people died, but it was more like 68 has died in the last year. We lost 17 in a week span. The last funeral I went to was a good friend and brother of mine, who's Greg Floyd. He was a ex-fire chief here, his brother was a client of ours. And, I, I, and it, it's, it's heart-wrenching. You know, it, it, it hits you at the core 
to have to say goodbye to all of these people and you feel like they're dying prematurely. We can do better. You can help. I'm going to spend my last seconds just being a moment of silence for those that has passed on. Thank you for listening.